Can we throw satellites to space? Are we ready for this? Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech Hand. As technology advances and our reliance on satellites increases, we'll explore the physics behind throwing objects into space, the current technology available for launching satellites, and the challenges that need to be overcome in order to launch a satellite using a throwing method. In today's video, we will look at some of the ways to throw satellites into space. Before getting into the video, please make sure to click the subscribe button and bell icon. Let's dive in. Launching Satellites to Space Launching satellites into space is a complex process that requires a deep understanding of physics and engineering. The main challenge of launching a satellite into space is to overcome the gravitational pull of the Earth and attain a sufficient velocity, known as the escape velocity, which is around 11.2 kilometers a second. Can we throw satellites to space? In theory, it is possible to throw a satellite into space using some form of mechanical launcher, such as a large cannon or a mass driver. However, the technology for such a launcher does not currently exist, and there are significant technical challenges that would need to be overcome. One of the main challenges of using a mechanical launcher to throw a satellite into space is the amount of energy required to accelerate the satellite to the necessary velocity to overcome Earth's gravity. A mechanical launcher would need to be able to generate enormous amounts of energy to achieve this, far more than any current technology is capable of. Additionally, the mechanical launcher would need to be incredibly precise in order to accurately aim and launch the satellite into the correct orbit. The slightest error in the launcher's aim could result in the satellite missing its intended orbit and falling back to Earth. There are also other factors that need to be considered, such as the physical integrity of the satellite, the launcher itself, and the safety of people working around it. Ways to throw satellites to space Number 1. Expendable Rockets Expendable rockets are also known as single-use or disposable rockets, are a type of launch vehicle that are used only once and are not intended to be reused. Unlike reusable rockets, which are designed to be launched multiple times and then recovered and refurbished for future use, expendable rockets are designed to be discarded after a single use. One of the main advantages of expendable rockets is that they are typically less complex and cheaper to produce than reusable rockets. This is because they do not need to be designed to withstand the stresses of multiple launches and landings, and they do not require the additional systems and infrastructure needed for recovery and refurbishment. Another advantage of expendable rockets is that they can be optimized for a specific mission or payload, rather than needing to be a general purpose design that can accommodate a wide range of payloads. This allows for greater flexibility in terms of the size and weight of the payload that can be launched. However, the major disadvantage of expendable rockets is that they are discarded after each use, which can be costly and environmentally damaging. The debris from an expended rocket can also pose a risk to people and property on the ground. Examples of expendable rockets are the Atlas V, the Delta IV Heavy by United Launch Alliance and the Proton-M by Roscoe Mose, Arian V by European Space Agency ESA, and Long March V by China National Space Administration. Number 2. Reusable Rockets Reusable rockets, also known as partially reusable and partially recoverable rockets, are a type of launch vehicle that are designed to be used multiple times. They are typically recovered after launch and then refurbished before being reused for another mission. This is in contrast to expendable rockets, which are discarded after a single use. The main advantage of reusable rockets is that they can significantly reduce the cost of space launch, as they do not need to be built from scratch for every mission. This can also lead to increased safety and reliability, as the rocket systems and infrastructure used in previous launches have been tested and proven to work. Another advantage of reusable rockets is that they can reduce the environmental impact of space launches, as they do not produce as much debris as expendable rockets. They also require additional systems and infrastructure for recovery and refurbishment. Examples of reusable rockets include SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, Blue Origin's New Shepard, and Orbital Sciences Corporation's Pegasus. These companies are investing a lot of money and resources in order to make reusable rockets more common in the industry and make them more accessible to other players. Number 3. Air Launched Vehicles Air Launched Vehicles are a type of launch vehicle that are carried into the air by an aircraft before being released to continue their ascent into space. This approach allows for greater flexibility in terms of launch location and timing, as the aircraft can take off and land on a runway, like a traditional airplane. 
and can launch the vehicle from a variety of locations and altitudes. This allows for greater flexibility in terms of launch timing and trajectory. Another advantage of the air launch vehicles is that they can take advantage of the speed and altitude of the aircraft to provide a boost to the launch vehicle, increasing its performance and reducing the size and weight of the rocket needed to reach a given orbit. Air launch vehicles can be classified as expendable or reusable like traditional launch vehicles, but their method of launch is different. Examples of air launch vehicles include Orbital Sciences Corporation's Pegasus, Strata Launch Systems Pegasus XL, Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1, and the now retired Space Shuttle by NASA. Number 4. Multi-Stage Rockets Multi-Stage Rockets are rockets that use two or more stages, or sections, in their propulsion systems. Each stage is designed to function during a specific portion of the rocket's flight, and is typically optimized for the conditions that will be present during that stage of the flight. When the first stage of the multi-stage rocket is fired, it propels the rocket off the launch pad and into the lower atmosphere. Once the first stage's fuel is expended, it is jettisoned and the second stage takes over. This process continues until the final stage has propelled the rocket to its intended destination, such as orbit and escape velocity. Using multiple stages allows for a more efficient use of fuel and a greater payload capacity, because each stage only needs to provide the necessary thrust for the portion of the flight that it is used in. That is opposed to using a single stage rocket that would need to carry all the fuel necessary for the entire flight, which would greatly increase its weight and reduce its payload capacity. A well-known example of a multi-stage rocket is the Saturn V rocket, used for the Apollo moon missions. It had three stages. The first stage was used to launch the rocket from the ground. The second stage was used to propel the rocket out of the Earth's atmosphere. And the third stage was used to put the Apollo spacecraft into lunar orbit. Number 5. Solid Rocket Boosters Solid rocket boosters SRBs, are rocket engines that use solid fuel, typically a mixture of aluminum and ammonium, perch low rate, to provide thrust. They are called solid because the fuel and the oxidizer are mixed together and are in a solid state at room temperature. Unlike liquid rocket engines that store the fuel and oxidizer separately and pump them into a combustion chamber, SRBs are often used to provide additional thrust during the initial stages of launch, helping to lift the rocket off the launch pad and into the lower atmosphere. They are commonly used in conjunction with liquid-fueled rocket engines, which provide propulsion during the later stages of flight when more precise control is needed. One of the main advantages of SRBs is that they are relatively simple and reliable. Since the fuel and oxidizer are already mixed together, there's no need for complicated pumping systems, and the risk of leakage or spills is minimized. Number 6. Liquid-Fueled Rocket Engines Liquid-Fueled Rocket Engines are a type of rocket propulsion system that use liquid propellants, such as kerosene or liquid hydrogen, that are stored in tanks and pumped into the engine's combustion chamber, where they are mixed with an oxidizer and ignited to produce thrust. One of the main advantages of liquid-fueled rocket engines is that they can be shut off and restarted. This allows for more precise control of the rocket's trajectory and velocity, and is especially useful in the later stages of flight, when the rocket is already in space and precise maneuvers are necessary. Number 7. Hybrid Rockets Hybrid rockets are a type of rocket propulsion system that use a combination of solid and liquid or gaseous fuel. In a hybrid rocket, the fuel is typically in a solid state, while the oxidizer is in a liquid or gaseous state. This allows for a number of advantages over both solid and liquid rocket engines. One of the main advantages of hybrid rockets is that they offer a good balance between the simplicity and reliability of solid rocket engines and the precise control and efficiency of liquid rocket engines. Since the fuel is in a solid state, it can be handled and stored like a solid propellant, making it simpler and safer than liquid propellants. However, since the oxidizer is in a liquid or gaseous state, it can be pumped into the combustion chamber and precisely controlled, allowing for a high degree of thrust, control, and efficiency. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Let us know in the comments that you are subscribed and what you think of this video. We will reply to you personally. You can also give a thumbs up. Thanks for that.